Hey folks, so this video's topic is going to be on the spirits, or as I like to call them, the Vaitya. That is V-A-E-T-T-I-R for the plural and V-A-E-T-T-R for the singular. Now, what are the spirits? The spirits are beings that inhabit pretty much everything from the smallest bits of earth to the tree that's right behind me, to the air that I'm breathing to the stars. The spirits are in and potentially of everything. Does that mean my hat is a spirit? Yeah. The electricity that runs through this phone that makes this video possible, that's a spirit. The air that I'm breathing right now, that I'm communicating with you, that is also a spirit. So where, where is this notion of spirits really end. Um, as far as I relate to it as a heathen, it doesn't. And that's the fun part about the animism within the polytheist framework of heathenry, that everything is or potentially is in soul. So we can look at, say, a sword, and a sword might be named. So does it have a spirit before it's named or when it's named? And you could, you could argue that either way. I, I tend to take the perspective that even if we don't name them, objects have inborn spirits because a name is a recognition. Whether or not you name a person doesn't stop them from having personhood. It's a way of relating to them. And if you're relating to them properly, you're going to call them by the name they tell you they want you to call them. So within this framework, how do we relate to spirits? Well, it depends on the form the spirit takes and how we understand and relate to that object if it's physical. So we might relate to the earth beneath our feet as a goddess, as Yorf, but we also relate to the actual being under our feet as made up of lots of different spirits, of Landvatiya. And that is the most common way that folks in heathenry are going to relate to the spirits is in spirits of place, whether it's the Lanvatir, the Watervatir, or Vatnvatir, and the fire spirits, the Eldervatir. So a lot of folks relate to them through the mediums through which the spirits interact with us and have a relationship with us. So the spirits can take a number of forms that don't have anything to do with being physically bound. So you've got ancestors, for instance, and these are dead people that we hold a relationship with. And some spirits might be big enough or powerful enough or have enough cosmological function to be related to as gods. So what's the difference between a god and a spirit? I asked this in the gods, uh, gods portion. I think that has to do with spheres of influence and cosmological function, at least a lot of it. And it's whether we have that relationship of relating to them as a god. Certainly there are people out there who will never relate to Loki as a god. I do. Uh, there are, are people who relate to him as a fire spirit. I mean, I do, but I also relate to him as a god. So we can have all these complexes of relationships even when we're talking about spirits. Um, you can hold cultists with spirits on your land and with your local river, for instance. And it may not functionally look all that different from your relationship with the gods. So the, the vase you keep might look very similar. Uh, I, for instance, would give offerings to this tree and thanking it for its time and its space. And I would do the same for Othin. So does that practice actually look different? Well, honestly, not really, because I'm going to probably give... Uh, the same kinds of offerings to this tree that I would give to Othin. And that doesn't mean that Othin matters more and the tree matters less, or vice versa, or that they're on the same level of relationship. It, it's just my most common offerings. So how do we relate to spirits? It kind of depends on how you relate to your environment, how you relate to the worlds within the, the heathen worldview, the nine worlds within the Norse heathen worldview. So if you have um, a relationship where you honor the Dvergar, because for instance, I have a lot of blacksmith friends who do. 
and they have very good relationships with the Dvedagar, the dwarves. So they keep these devotional relationships up because the, the, the blacksmiths recognize that these are the par excellence spirits of blacksmithing to the point where the Aesir go to them for their weapons and tools and finery. So you can have a powerful devotional relationship to a spirit that isn't a god, even if functionally speaking, a lot of what you're doing looks very similar. Uh, you might be relating to them through things, much like you might with your ancestors, such as profession, like with these blacksmiths and the Dvergar. You might relate to them as, well, you share this world with me, and so I want to share this world in right reciprocity with you. So you develop a good relationship with the land that he, whether you're renting or whether you own the land, is kind of beside the point, because none of us really truly own the land in such a worldview, because how do you own a spirit like that? That's a whole topic you could make a bunch of videos on unto itself. So, the Lanvatir, the way that I understand and relate to them, is that not only are they in the ground, in the trees, they're in every blade of grass, they're in every piece of matter underneath my feet, from the smallest grain of sand to the boulders that are around the property. And some spirits just happen to be bigger, and some happen to be smaller. So... I might hold a special relationship with this boulder because maybe I like to sit next to it and write. And that might be my relationship with the boulder, and it doesn't have to be any deeper than that. Um, I might give offerings to this tree behind me for giving me a wonderful spot to do these videos and to enjoy its company. Now, uh, you might give offerings, say, if you're going to cut down one of these trees because it needs to be harvested and you're coppicing and you're trying to keep the forest healthy, you would give offerings before felling it because you recognize that this being has a life and that its life has value and part of your right relationship with it is to give it offerings and to say thank you. And I think that that's a bit different than saying I'm sorry because in the case of coppicing or in the case of, say, hunting, and you're giving the deer a gift you know, when you bring it down, similar to bringing down this tree would be, you are thanking it for its cycle in life and you are thanking it for its gift of life and recognizing its sacrifice. And to my mind, the I'm sorry bit strikes a little bit discordant there because the apology versus the thanking it's to me it's it's a difference of mindset and some folks might prefer I'm sorry to thank you and that might be better for their way of relating to the cycle of taking and giving or the gifting cycle as it's usually referred to so <laughs> this can get complex pretty quick and I could, like with the sections with the gods and the ancestors, I could spend an enormous amount of time. But I think we've covered about as much of the basics of relating to the Vaitir, the spirits, as I can for one video. So I hope to see you in the next one.